This story starts 2,200 years ago, when, as legend has it, Archimedes used the polished shields of the Greek soldiers to set fire to the Roman fleet, which had blockaded the port of Syracuse. We're here to talk to Bill Finney. Bill was the station manager for 10 years. Bill, welcome, and thank Thanks. you for coming. It's great to be back, okay? <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, being, sure. like being home again, right? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. So tell us, what is it we have here? We have in this container room a listed diesel three-cylinder that was converted to steam that drove the generator that charged the batteries so this station could run 24 hours a day. Bill, tell me how the dishes generated steam. Uh, well, first of all, there was 14 five-metre dishes here that tracked the sun. They have a sensor on the top of the dish that latched onto the sun and they followed the sun round from sun up, sunrise to sunset. Yep. Sunset come, they shut down and all the dishes come back to the sunrise position. Right. And then in the morning, up the sun would come, the dish would latch onto the sun, the focal point would latch onto the absorber. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to see the absorber? Yeah, yep. This is the, actually the focal point about two metres away from the edge of the dish and the centre of the dish. The, the sun's rays were 5,000 degrees Celsius, wow. which is fairly warm. Yeah. And that was focused just around here and inside, and this stainless steel tubing had distilled water pumped through it, and that generated steam here at a thousand pounds per square inch, which is four times the pressure of the old steam trains. We're here at the Wycliffe's Hotel to talk to Graham Wellings who is the publican here since 1974. Let's go and talk to Graham. Graham, pleasure to meet you. Good to see uh, you, Graham. You had quite some involvement with the power station right from the very early days. I certainly did, yeah. From the time Professor Canniff sort of wandered into town and said, well, we're interested in putting the power station in Whitecliffs. Can you give us a hand? I said, yeah. The block of land out there, which I think would be an ideal site for it and which to, that's where it finished up where the site is. He said, we're going to have some monitoring equipment to check out the wind and the cloud volume. Professor Steve Caniff, who we call Professor Sunshine. Right. Because he, <laughs> he's out in the sunshine yes, all the time. And yeah. he, was, he was born in Broken Hill, so he's a, he's a wonderful fella. Yeah. So he used to come out every now and again, check on everything, modify things and stuff like that. So he, he's a good fella to get on with. I discovered these um, photographs in Professor Canniff's um, collection, which I believe were taken here at the hotel. Yeah, monitoring different sites in New South Wales to get the best site for it. And the, these machines monitored the vo wind velocity and the cloud cover per day. So I monitored those for about 12 months, and from that they decided which area they were going to use. And then Wycliffe was decided in 78. When construction started, I gave a hand with that. Kurt and I stood the poles there that house the dishes at the moment and produced power from their generator here while I was building it. Then I even got to do the official opening on the site when it was done. That's quite some honour. It was yeah. great, yeah. yeah. He used to visit my garden up here. I'd, the hot water tank up there, the cooling tank, was all nice and warm. We grew vegetables all year round here. And he used to get up and he used to complain about the tomatoes in the middle of winter. He said, they're too juicy, Bill. They don't fit in the bread too good. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the steam came in. Yep. And what happened then? That come through the pipe over here. Yep. Up over here. Down through, this is the pipeline here. Come through here. Yep, these ones here. These ones into the air and this engine was converted back to a two-stroke from a four-stroke and the steam just come in here, out of here, into this condenser here to keep the constant supply of good clean water. Yep. The oil was separated off the top of the water, that come back to the 
water tank here, uh, fuel oil tank here in the, the main tank. oil tank there. Yeah. So after the sun went down, what happened then? The generator went back on the big bank of batteries they yep. had in the other container and that ran the town through the night till the sun came up in the morning. And amazing. Then it, it, amazing. Was, it was amazing. It was, yeah. yeah. So we, there was night and day by using yep, storage. Yep. I think it was about 12 houses, the post office, uh, the corner store, the hall and the hospital. It was all standalone power. Most of the dug outsides had uh, wind generators mm. and uh, 12 to 32 volt systems. I had a 240 power st uh, for the pub, with st a standalone power for 18 years. Uh, I allowed only two kilowatts of power each. Everybody was limited, but that gave enough power to run a, a, a jug, a toaster, a uh, wash machine or anything like that. But they couldn't run any more, otherwise the thermal switch would cut out and they had to go and reset it and unplug what they overloaded it with. Uh, and the hotel was using 12, so I didn't go onto the, no. to the grid at that time. And it's pretty simple. Yes. And it ran, as I said, for 10 years constantly. It wasn't until the generator, they put a diesel generator in, and then they connected all the town. Once the power came, it made a complete change to their lives in Whitecliffs. And uh, out of the first commercial solar power station in the world. And it's amazing that, to think that Australia started something did it, like this. We did it first. Yeah, we did it first, yeah. yeah. It was the best thing that could ever happen to yeah. this town. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Graham. Been a pleasure meeting you. Been great to have your company on, mate, and have a yarn. Drop by any time, we'll have a coldie. Right now, there are 50 large-scale solar thermal power stations around the world, generating at least 50 megawatts per hour. Wonderful bit of Australian ingenuity. When solar was coming, it was the greatest thing since sliced bread. And the younger generation will look at this and say, look what Australia started off, eh? It was the best thing that ever happened to like this. Yeah. Back in the 1970s, there was a lot of research around the world into solar thermal power. There was only one team that successfully produced a commercial power station, the Australian National University team right here in Whitecliffs. This has been the story of those amazing pioneers who invented the future. Bill being 300 kilometres from the nearest regional centre, you would have had to have been very self-reliant. You can say that again, Graham. Whitecliff Solar. There's a fridge up on the Mullock Heaps there on the bloke with the plug. Where do I plug it in? <laughs> <laughs>that's an amazing achievement to, to run the power station for 10 years yeah, but after only four days training. But being a Kiwi, we like Australians, we can do any bloody thing, Yeah, mate. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we can figure it out. Yeah, we can figure it out. No, well done, Bill. <laughs> an amazing story. <laughs> One of the best jobs in my life, mate. Yeah. yeah. We had a standby generator out here, so no, we never, never were there powering it. What did you do with that bit of wine, Bill? <laughs> <laughs>